All right, let's reshare that screen. Uh, hope you can all see the Modsy homepage on my screen right now. Okay, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, this is a pretty freewheeling little uh, hacker hints and tips session uh, for the, the Modsy Hackathon. So just, you know, feel free to ask any questions. Um, you know, in the, uh, what am I monitoring right now? The Hackathon General Channel um, or anywhere else you can raise me. Uh, so the, the basic plan is to just keep this fairly high level, but to give you enough info to kind of make you dangerous on using modsy.com. Uh, essentially, we are just going to go through one of the basic uh, documents, uh, running modsy within a Flask app. And uh, we're just going to kind of go through this together. And then if we have time or if there's any interest, we can dive in deeper and deeper and maybe expand and extend this app uh, out so that you can kind of see some of the other features of modsy. But uh, any uh, any initial thoughts or questions from there? Everyone know what Modsy is and know what this uh, hackathon is all about. All right. So let's just start. Uh, we're going to download the source code. Uh, again, I'm going to try to keep this as high level and friendly to even non-developers as possible. So uh, I do expect, you know, we will use the terminal. Uh, we might open up a Jupyter notebook and we'll be using, we'll be reading through a lot of Python information uh, as we go. But I'm going to try to keep this as non-technical as possible and, and just get you all quick started. Uh, so first thing first, let's grab that Flask template. Modsy's made this nice little template for you. Uh, it, it includes everything you need to get up and running really quickly. Uh, if you're comfortable with GitHub, feel free to clone it, uh, pull it into your own process as you go. Uh, if you're not, you know, just feel free to download the zip and open it up uh, so that it's a nice folder uh, sitting on your hard drive wherever you happen to be. Uh, with that, we will jump back over to the, the documents here. Um, and I'm going to assume at this point that you've already installed Python. Uh, this does take, you know, a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes. People have particular uh, requirements, whether they're installing on Homebrew or from the, the installer that you can just get off uh, Python's official website. But we're not going to go through that right now because it's a little bit boring um, and takes a bit. But we are going to go to the next step. You know, it's always a good idea to create a virtual environment. This just contains everything uh, within a single environment so your project isn't going to start interfering with other projects on your computer. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and you know open the terminal at this point, uh, we'll make a new one, and then we're going to navigate over to that folder that we just downloaded, uh, the Mozzie Flask app, the template. We're going to go in there and we're just going to go ahead and create that virtual environment right there. Sometimes this can take a couple of minutes. Uh, it went pretty fast this time. But from there, uh, we just want to go inside that virtual environment and activate it. So this is just a pretty simple command. Again, we could have uh, copy and pasted it from here. Um, and then finally, we're going to pull in this uh, Flask. Flask is basically a Python web server. Uh, very small, very lightweight. Uh, we're going to install the stuff necessary for that, and then flask-wtf is um, is a uh, web forms uh, parser. So it's just a little extension to Flask. So we've we've installed it. We saw that there are already a bunch of requirements uh, already met, uh, and then we're going to install the Modsy SDK. Uh, this is just a wrapper around our API to make it really easy for Python developers uh, to use basically everything within the, the Python SDK uh, within our own APIs, uh, just 
something to make everything as easy as possible. I'm going to go ahead and install that. Um, again, you know, it, it installs a few uh, prerequisites, um, but everything's pretty easy and fast. So now we should be up and running with, you know, a Python installation and a Flask install and even the Modzi SDK installed on our drive. So uh, the next thing, we're actually going to jump into Modzi itself. Uh, you should have an account on app.modzi.com. If not, you know, go make one. They're free. All we need is an email address to, to verify that you're real. Um, once you're there, you know, I always think it's a really good idea to create a new project. Um, I've already gone ahead and, and made a new project, but we can, well, let's go through it anyway. Uh, create a new project, again, kind of like a virtual environment. This is just going to segment everything off and show that, you know, we can, uh, we can just see what is, which models and what usage is involved in this particular project that we're doing. So let's just call it you know, tips and tricks, uh, description, doesn't take too much. Uh, we're then going to go into that tips and tricks. We're actually going to retrieve the key up here. Uh, this is a public and then dot private key. Uh, it's only available a single time. If I click this replace key, it's just going to gen it's going to deactivate the previous one and generate a new one. Uh, it just gives me a little text file with the key information in it right there. Um, so again, keep that secret, keep that safe. Uh, you're going to need it for a lot of the other parts of, of uh, you know, any time you use this project. Now, what we can do at this point, we have an option. You know, we do have to say what that key is. We have to tell that to uh, to the Flask app somehow. So we can either uh, actually, you know, put it in here as what's known as an environmental variable. Uh, that will go away. It's a little bit dynamic. So alternatively, uh, from within that folder that we just downloaded, that Monty Flask app template, you're going to see this config.py file. Uh, we can actually edit that and paste that key in permanently into there. Uh, this is, you know, it's nice just because it'll keep that key around forever. It'll, uh, you know, cross reboots, uh, that sort of thing. But it's a little bit less... Um, you know, I can't dynamically change projects, uh, although the way we've set this up, it'll actually look for an environment key first and then default back to this one. Uh, but either way, uh, your choice. Um, from there, we basically have everything set up. So the last command here is just to tell Flask where, uh, you know, if we say, hey, there's this demo site.py file, and it just tells Flask where and how to boot up the entire uh, Flask directory. So we're telling it Flask what to look for here. Uh, there are other ways of doing that. Again, if you're a Flask pro, feel free. Um, but from there, we hit Flask run, we hit enter, and we're off and running. Uh, this is the web server that we've set up. We can pull it in, and we get a nice you know, here, this is all of the generic stuff uh, that, that we've created just with that template, so you don't actually have to do any coding here. You can enter in any phrase that you want. Uh, Modzi's going to run that for you and come back with a sentiment analysis. So this was the text, and it's predominantly positive. Um, maybe I'm uh, patting myself on the back a little bit there. I don't know. <laughs> um, so... Again, you know, this is five minutes, and we stood up a web server. We ran an analysis on a piece of text using a Modzi inference model, using our sentiment analysis model specifically. Um, super, super easy. Uh, got us up and running. So any questions so far? Can assume not. Uh, so... You know, given that there's no no questions yet, um, by the way, we can jump over here and actually see that you know that job that we ran is in the history, um, yeah, positive, mostly. Uh, but we can see that it ran. It ran pretty quickly. Um, everything here that that we need to know. Uh, and again, we can be monitoring every single uh, job that we run against this particular project from within the projects tab. Uh, 
So this is the first project. Um, so from here, you know, that is the extent of this quick start, and it was pretty quick. And we can go start diving deeper into the actual code itself, or we can, uh, you know, maybe extend and expand it. Uh, we do have, you know, there, there are easy ways to maybe pull in this RSS feed summarizer right into that Flask app uh, using, you know, any of these other models that are also pretty easily available. If you have no feedback, I'll just go ahead and start there. Uh, so let's kind of dive in. Um, what we're looking at here is just a basic Flask init file. Uh, when we opened up Flask, it said, you know, use this file to initiate the entire application. So we're just creating a Flask app and creating um, a config from that config.py file. Very, very simple, but this isn't really a Flask tutorial, this is a Modsy tutorial. Uh, so we're gonna jump over here to, again, these, these routes. We created a route uh, that is just saying an endpoint, so when you go to you know, your web host slash sentiment, you're gonna hit this, this portion of code is gonna be executed. Uh, we set up that basic form that accepts your, um, your input text uh, and then, you know, if that form is valid, then we'll run, you know, this first line is just for me. I like to run kind of a debug function uh, without actually hitting a model. Uh, you know, if I haven't run the model lately or if I'm offline, like if I was running this on an airplane, say, I want a nice offline version of this that I can still debug against. But the real meat comes in right here. Uh, we run the sentiment analysis on the input data from that form. Um, and again, just to remind everyone that form uh, is just this text doc and a button. Um, so we're running the input text on that. Uh, if this were like a real application, obviously we'd have to do a lot more error catching and make sure that you're not trying to do anything bad with that input text. But um, for simplicity's sake, we're just running a sentiment analysis on that. And the sentiment analysis is really where Modsy uh, pops up and becomes real. We've defined this very simple two-line function down here. We create a job uh, using this client object. The client I set up is kind of a global object up here using that API key and API URL we set up earlier. Uh, we submit a text job using this model, this version, and then that input text that we retrieved from the form. Uh, this might seem a little bit complex, but we can actually go, you know, right back over to Modsy and say, um, let's look at the sentiment analysis model. Uh, you know, we can learn about the sentiment analysis model, but assuming we already know that we want to use it, we pull over to the API. We've got that model ID right here that we can copy. Um, and then we actually have an example uh, of how to use it. So you can see all I did was copy and paste this line here into my code here. Uh, and then the, that input text, I changed it around a little bit, but uh, essentially the same thing. So that one line of code pushes data into Modsy. It runs the inference uh, governed by this ID on that data. And, and then it sits there. Uh, Modsy is an asynchronous client. So whenever you feel like you need to go back and get that data, you can retrieve it, uh, but we won't push it onto your client, uh, at least not in this particular mode. So the next line, we go retrieve that. Uh, I'm using this block until complete function. That's really just a very simple, uh, you know, developer friendly way of saying, you know, if this is a 15 or a 20 or a 30 minute job, uh, just wait until the job is finished and then come back and check again. Um, because this is sentiment analysis and it usually takes, you know, 500 milliseconds, uh, this probably won't, uh, won't matter too much. Um, but then the last line here, I'm actually, the result is a JSON object, and so I'm parsing down through that JSON object to get uh, the actual result that I want. Uh, and again, we pop over here and we can see that entire structure, so we're jumping into results, JSON, data, result, and then the class predictions object, which would say, neutral, compound, positive, negative. Uh, it'll give that complete score that we're looking for. Uh, 
So then this just returns that function into our original, which uses that data to render an HTML template. Uh, but essentially that is the modsy part. Uh, we can jump over into that template and we see that you know we're creating a very basic HTML table that has the class and the score and we're running through that if you know viewing the class and the score from that modsy uh, output over here. Really that's all there is to it for this particular model. Um, again we're, we're trying to make it as simple as possible for you to integrate in uh, and so this is literally those couple of lines of code are, are all it takes to run a model and then pull that model into your particular application. So let's see if are there any, uh, any questions, comments, uh, Any uh, desires on where to go next? Okay. Well, if we want to talk about where to go next, uh, you know, this RSS feed summarizer is, um, is a pretty fun little uh, example. Basically, we, you know, we can use any of a bunch of different models on text. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, you, you run across an RSS feed on the web or somewhere and they don't have, say, summaries or they don't know uh, what exactly that blog is discussing. Um, so maybe we want to actually use Modsy to summarize their RSS feed and give us a, an idea of what the, the major topics are. Um, so we're using multiple models, potentially chained models, uh, especially if you wanted to translate, something like that. Um, but uh, this, ultimately this is going to be the exact same as the sentiment analysis, just with you know, different model IDs. But I wanted to go through a little bit more of the process you know, relevant to the, the hackathon type environment. Because um, what I'll do a lot of times, you know, is actually kind of do a proof of concept before we run into the hackathon. So this company like Modsy usually has a blog. Uh, our blog is, you know, lots of good articles, but usually there's just a maybe a one sentence slug at the top. So not a not a great um, uh, summary. Uh, maybe we can, you know, improve that a little bit. Uh, we click in, there's, there's quite a bit of text here, but again, I want to know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, so in a case like this, what I'll often do is actually open up, um, open up a, like something like a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with it, this essentially just allows you to, to run a little bit of code in a web browser. Um, we'll just go ahead and... Ultimately, op, you know, it's optimized for Python, uh, but it, it allows me to do fun stuff. Uh, just because I kind of know already, I know I want to use requests, which allows me to pull in web pages. I know I want to use Beautiful Soup, which is just the library that allows me to uh, parse through that HTML. Um, and then let's go over here and say, oh, you know, how do I get to this web page? Uh, or actually, how do I get to the full feed here? Um, we don't actually have, let's see, yeah, we don't actually have a link to our RSS feed, but we can see with uh, Chrome and stuff that there is a feed reader in here. Uh, so we'll just pull that feed out. So it's modsy.com slash feed. Uh, we'll copy that. If it'll let me, there we go. <laughs> Uh, and then we're just going to say, hey, our feed URL is that. Uh, this will set it up. From there, uh, pretty simple. You know, again, I like the requests library, so we're just going to, whoops, I left out. That. We're going to request the feed URL, and we're just going to see what happens. 
Well, we got a 403 here, uh, so that is forbidden. And I know from prior experience that uh, a lot of times uh, sites like Modsy are going to have a little bit of security just to try to make sure you're a real user. So we're going to throw some headers in up there. Um, these are not real headers that you can probably tell, but yay, we got an, uh, a response 200. And uh, if we wanted to check that out, hey, look at that. Um, we've got a nice XML object um, that should include all the information that we need from that RSS feed. Uh, in fact, I think we could probably look at it here as well. And there you go. So the great thing about this feed, uh, it's nicely structured. Every single article has a title, a link, um, creator, a date, uh, and it has this description, but the description is not a summary. So I still, my goal is to get a summary going here. Um, so I'm just gonna, you know, beautiful soup is great. So I'm gonna parse this into XML, same exact text, but it just looks a little bit, a little bit prettier. And then uh, we know that each of those articles is going to be an item, and each item has a title, link, all that. So we're going to use Beautiful Soup to just roll through all of those items. And look at that, we found 10 of them. So wonderful. Um, from those 10, we're going to, you know, we're going to assume that each one of those is an article, and we're going to extract out title, link, uh, publish date. Uh, all that fun stuff, um, everything that we need to that article to make a good summary page. Uh, so we can you know, pull the cake out of the oven. I've already written some of that code here. We've got title, link, and when it was published, and we're just going to create a little object uh, for each of those to clean things up a bit. So there we go. We've got every single article, uh, what the link is, where it was published, uh, but we don't have the text of that article, which could get a little uh, interesting. We're going to have to actually follow this link and then extract the text from there. And again, this is uh, a great place where that beautiful soup library comes from, but we can look at the actual articles and see if there's anything interesting about them. Um, you know, look at that. We've got an article title right here, and then we've got article body or post content right here. Uh, so what we can do is actually use Beautiful Soup to run through each of these articles, look for those tags within that article, and then extract out that text. Um, I'm just going to... What we did here is we requested a link. Uh, we parsed that link using Beautiful Soup, and then we grabbed you know, that post content and that title as the... Uh, content and the title of each text, which if we get an error, um, this could take a few seconds as it uh, runs through each one, but at the end of it we see that now in addition to title, link published, we have a full text uh, part of that object. Um, so with that, you know, we could extract out that article.txt. Um, there's one. Hey, look, we're excited to announce the Mozzie Hackathon. I'm glad that you all came uh, <laughs> and saw this, I'm sure. But that is, again, a lot of text. Uh, so from here, let's do the same thing that we did with sentiment analysis, and let's finally involve Mozzie. Uh, this is a new model, so let's go see uh, what we can find over on modsy.com. We want a summarization model. So let's just search. Text summarization. Sounds great. This model condenses a text article into a summary. Excellent. Uh, let's pull some Python code. We'll just copy this and then paste it down here. This code is basically complete. All we need to do is insert your API key. Uh, so we had that, remember we had that saved right there. Paste it in and uh, 
let's change this input text from that to, you know, just as an experiment, we'll actually use that article text from above. And then we'll run the job. Gets us this nice job ID, um, but we can pop back over. And look at that. We have a new text summarization job here. It's got a nice, and it already completed, hacked together the best powered app bot integration library. Registration opens October 11th, runs through December 1st, and grand prize will get $10,000. It's a pretty good summary of that long article, uh, and we got this, you know, in one and a half seconds. So in terms of proof of concept, uh, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, we've shown that we can pull text from a web page, that we can push that text into Modsy, and that we can then summarize that text. Um, just to complete the circle here, let's uh, get those results. And we can again just use that identifier. Uh, and we can see the full results here that we just saw in the web page. Um, and then we could potentially use this summary in, you know, in our Blast app. Um, one thing we definitely want to do is run all of these as a batch. Uh, so when we copy and pasted this, we saw that, you know, sources, we can add as many input sources as we need. Uh, so what we might want to do is create a little loop. Let's generate a new sources document and then a loop. We're going to say for article in the article list uh, using the title, grab the text and push that over as the input. Uh, we can inspect that. Hmm. What did we call it up here? Anyone see where my typo is? Oh, we haven't generated the text yet. Uh, and that's because we only got uh, a single text document up here. Because um, for some reason I'm using A instead of article. <laughs> so let's just run that again and actually pull all 10. Uh, now we have a lot more text. All right. Hopefully that's complete. Um, we'll try running this one again. And yep, that creates a whole lot more text uh, for our source document. And then we can actually uh, take this exact same code up here, run a new job using that new sources list. Again, we've got that nice job identifier, so we can pop back over to our project. And there's our new job. And this one has 10 items. Each item has the name of that article. And then within each article, we're going to get a nice summary, just like we saw before. Uh, but this was a nice batch process. So even running 10 things took you know, five seconds about less than a quarter second each for most of these items. Uh, super useful. Um, so from there, like at this point, we know that we have a really good uh, proof that our concept is going to work. Uh, what I would do, and you know, this is just me kind of thinking out loud, uh, hackathon style. I'm doing a lot of data ETL. I extracted the data from a web page. I transformed it into my own little object, and now I'm loading it into the, um, into the Modsy AI and inference engine. Uh, so I've done that entire part. 
Uh, and now I could actually package all this into a single, um, single Flask app that can then be used uh, you know, as just another web page uh, on that existing uh, Flask file that we saw. I have gone ahead and done that ahead of time, of course. Um, and we can see it's pulling on over. Uh, from here, you know, we've gone ahead and I replaced that index route with just something more generic. Um, and then down here, I create an RSS feed summarizer. So again, this is pulling in that RSS feed from the form, just like we did for sentiment analysis. Uh, and then we are scraping the RSS from that RSS feed. Scraping that RSS is exactly the function that we worked out in the uh, Jupyter Notebook. We pulled the URL, we parsed it with soup, we extracted each article from it, and then extracted the title, link, description, all that from that article. Uh, we then used the text to actually, uh, well, we went through each of those articles and got the text just like we did before. And then here, we're running the text through. Um, in this particular case, I'm doing it one at a time instead of a batch. Uh, but you can do it either way, obviously, uh, whichever happens to be easier for you. Uh, and then this last piece, again, just like sentiment analysis, we are waiting for those results to be complete, extracting them, and then adding them back into that object. Uh, when that object's done, we're returning it to the web page for display. Uh, and you know we. We modified that HTML just a little bit, but essentially it's the exact same. We pulled that data from Modsy. We're showing off the article title. We're showing off the article summary. Uh, I declared it safe here because I'm hoping that you know it's, it's either Markdown or HTML, but I'm not doing any error checking or anything to decide that you aren't trying to hack me with, because this is all my own code. So. Uh, if you expose this to the public, you're definitely going to want to do a lot more work around that area. Uh, and then I even added in, you know, the publishing date. Uh, I only pulled in the first bits because I think this goes all the way out to thousandths of a second. Um, that is all there is to it. Uh, from there, you can, of course, uh, continue following along uh, on this RSS feed summarizer. We've got a nice recipe. Uh, you know, it goes through all the same code, pulling in the articles, parsing the articles, and pushing them into Modsy. Uh, but what we've done here is actually extended it so that we can pull out names uh, and examine it for topics. So then you can create a list of every single article in an RSS feed, create a text summarization of each of those articles, show who wrote it and who was mentioned in it, uh, and potentially, you know, what the top five or top ten topics are that was discussed in that article. Uh, this recipe will walk you through that step by step, uh, same as we just did now, um, and in fact display the results. And you know, at the end, you get really nice things like here's the title, the date it was published, the summary, and then those top ten uh, topics that were discussed in the article. Um, so. I think we moved pretty fast. Uh, I didn't hear too many questions, didn't hear too much uh, desire to go dive deeper into some of the details, but um, I don't know, are there, are there any last questions or was this enough to get you all up and running and a little bit dangerous? Yeah, you can feel free to, to type the text.
caused a tiniest little spike in the uh, the cluster. <laughs> Some of these sentiment analysis are actually uh, explainable. So this is a uh, you know this is a pretty neutral statement, but. Um, We could have run some of the other uh, text through our explainability as well. just lost your question. Okay, the question, my plan for the hackathon is to build a browser extension that uses deepfake checks. Can Modsy handle simultaneous calls and how I identify the requests or the answers from the server? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, we do have a, uh, uh, maybe it's not published yet. Oh yeah, there it is. So we do have a deepfake detection walkthrough, um, which you might use as a basis but uh, absolutely, every single, you know, as we kind of saw in the, um, in the Jupyter Notebook here, when you call a job, every job gets an identifier. Um, and each of those identifiers is absolutely unique. Um, and Modsy is completely asynchronous. So I could actually submit, you know, 100 jobs and never listen for any response as long as I catalog uh, these identifiers and know that which job goes to which identifier. Uh, you know, later on, a minute later, or an hour later, or a week later, I can go back and retrieve the results using that job identifier. So I can submit as much as I want without ever getting the results, and then once I'm ready, retrieve those results and, uh, and display them. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, did that answer the question? You run through an example, like for this one, I did um, do the whole thing in a batch. Uh, but as we saw in the original, I actually went through each article and each uh, text summarization job was unique. So this would end up with 10 summarization jobs. Uh, and then as long as I kept track of that job ID, which I did here, uh, I can go back through and retrieve that using that job ID. Um, they will. One note is that uh, whether you do it in batch or one at a time like this, they're not guaranteed to be in order. So you can't necessarily say, you know, submit A, B, C, D, retrieve A, B, C, D. Uh, we do have, you know, 50 different CPUs and GPUs running on this particular cluster, and the system will push each of those jobs to each available CPU as it becomes available which means that the results could come back out of order. So you just need to make sure that you're matching that ID to that particular uh, result to guarantee that they go together. Any other questions? Looks like we've got someone else typing. If there are no more questions, I'll uh, stop the screen share, but I'll stay on here uh, for voice or for text analysis for another few minutes. Oh. Uh, so the answer to that question is yes, but uh, I know that with, with free accounts, with the Modsy Basic account, um, we do have a limit of, I want to say, a thousand calls per day. Uh, beyond that, you do have to, um, you know, we will start charging you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if, if extensions less than a thousand calls a day, or if you provide instructions for the users to then sign up for their own Modsy account and enter their own uh, API key, 
into that extension so they're using their stuff rather than uh, ours, or rather than yours, uh, then I think that's fine. Uh, let's say, yeah, we can get back to you on that if you have deeper questions. Very welcome. And again, you know, feel free to continue posting any questions and stuff here. Uh, we're gonna, we did record this, so we'll try to publish that somewhere. And uh, and best of luck to everybody. <laughs>